In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly fix overexposed images in Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually click on our image and then go over to channels. You might have channels like right here beside layers or up here. If you don't see it, go to window and then down to channels. And then all we're gonna do is hold command or control and click on the RGB one right here. And you're gonna see that it's gonna select all the kind of bright or highlight spots in your image. Then just go back to your image, click here on layer or click back over to layers, click on your image and then go control or command J to make a copy. Now, if I hide the background, you're gonna see that this is what we copied, all those kind of highlighted spots. Then all we're gonna do while we're selected on that new layer is change the blend mode right here from normal down to multiply. And you can see it already kind of fixed it a little bit. If I hide this, that's what it was before, that's what it is now. And then all we're gonna do is duplicate those. So I'm gonna go command or control J again to make a copy. And for me, I'm actually gonna make a third one just so you can see that you can just keep going. Then I'm gonna click on the top one, hold shift, click on the bottom one, and click on a folder right down here to put them in a group. Now, everything that we do to this group is gonna impact all of them now, everything that's in this folder. And really the main thing that I'm looking at here is I don't like all the blue in the snow over here. I like how these details of this snow are showing up and you know the background, the boots, all this is fine, but I wanna get rid of this blue. And one way to do that is to hold Alt and put a mask, so this box with a little circle on it, while you're selected on the full group, click on that, and it's gonna be an inverted mask filled with black, so that means it's kind of covering everything we've done, so you'll see your kind of original image. Then we're just gonna go over to our brush tool, make sure that you have white in the foreground, and make sure your flow is kind of around 20, 25%, somewhere in there. As for your brush, make it as big or small as you want. I'm gonna keep my hardness around 50% for now, and all you're gonna do is paint over the areas that you want to be affected by what we just did right here, these three you know, highlight or overexposed areas. So for me, I'm gonna do this really quick. It's the boots, so I'm painting in the boots, and I'm gonna go over this better after. I'm gonna do all this kind of foreground snow right here. So everything here that we kind of brought those details back and that's pretty much all I'm gonna do for my image. Now, if you happen to paint over an area that you don't want as part of the selection, like right here, it turns really blue and I don't want that, then just flick this back over to black and get rid of it. Just paint back over it to erase it out of the mask. If at this point you feel like you need more highlight recovery, then simply just go over to any one of your layers and go Command or Control J to make a copy and that'll increase the intensity. On the other hand, if you wanna decrease the intensity, then obviously just click on any layer and delete it, hit the trash can to get rid of it. If you wanna fine tune it even more, so let's say you think two of them was kinda of not enough and then the third one was too intense, then just go to that third one and then go to opacity and slide this down on that third one until you get the look that you want. And then you can also click on the mask of the group layer here and maybe feather your mask a little bit, or more importantly, you can change the density of the mask. So right now, if we look at this mask, you can see that whatever is black, we are seeing from the main background layer, the original one. Whatever's white, that's what we're seeing from this collection of layers here, which is on the boots and this snow right here. So if I change that density all the way down to zero, then that means that everything is white here, which means we're not seeing anything from the original background anymore. So if you play around with this, you can kind of adjust the overall look. So I'm gonna go with, you know, maybe like that. And you can see that it doesn't affect the areas at all that we painted. So the areas that were white on this mask, as we slide this, it's not affected at all. So this is just kind of to fine tune those other areas that we didn't deal with before. So maybe they were too bright, you thought, you can kind of tone those ones back a little bit to get the look that you want. And if you notice here, the mask is now turning gray here instead of black. So if I went this way a little bit more, you can see it's gonna be a light gray. So I'm gonna put it somewhere around like 75 there, which is kind of a dark gray. Now, the last thing you might need to fix is a little bit of a color shift that might have happened or 
like in my case, there's this extra little bit of vibrance still on the boots. So to fix that, you just click on your top layer, hold shift, and then click on your background layer, then go commander control J to copy all those, and then commander control E to merge them together. Then we're gonna right click, go up to convert to smart object, then go up to filter, and go into camera raw filter. In camera raw filter, you can obviously mess with whatever settings you want to make your image look better, but I'm just gonna show you a few quick ones to fix this kind of vibrance issue. To start, we're gonna go to white balance and just change it from as shot to auto. In my case, that changes it too much, so I'm gonna bring the temperature back a little bit, like it went too much yellow for my liking, and I'm just gonna take away a little bit of green, push it back this way a little bit. Down here, all we're gonna do is mess with highlights and shadows. You're gonna bring the highlights to the left as much as you want. So I'm gonna to go to about there and shadows to the right as much as you want. I don't like that much. I'm just gonna bump it up a little tiny bit in my case. And then the big one is really here for vibrance. So I'm just gonna bring it back all the way and you can see that that brings it too much, but that might be the look that you want. For me, I'm just gonna take it so that it's not so punchy. So I'm gonna to go to about maybe right there and that's about it. That's all I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna click OK. And as you can see, camera raw filter was applied to the entire image. But if we want it just applied to the boots and the foreground snow, like we did on these other layers over here, then all you have to do is drag that top layer underneath, like into the group. So you see this, the double line here underneath where the folder is. So right there and let go. Now that's gonna apply camera raw filter just to the boots and the foreground snow and not to the background because of the mask right here. Now, if I click the eyeball, you can see that's what we had before I did camera raw filter. Look at how vibrant the boots are and look at some of the blue in the snow here. And then when we apply the filter, put it back on, you can see that it takes all of that stuff away and makes it look a little bit better while still keeping the vibrance of the background. Now, if I close this group down and then I hold Alt and click on this eyeball, you can see that's what we started with and that's our final image. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.